Everybody, my name is Jennifer. I'm coming to you in regards of uh, just trying to give some information about my journey with fibroids. I went through a procedure of getting my fibroids removed three years ago in 2016. And I'm going to, you know, try to explain my journey personally with fibroids. Fibroids is something that's really, really common in a lot of African Americans or just women in general, but generally the African American population is very common and it's a thing that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, and you may wonder what is a fibroid? So a fibroid is a non-cancerous growth that grows and that develops in or around your uterus. And the growth um, are made up of muscle and fibrosis tissue. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, in various sizes. So they are sometimes known as uterine myomas and or limonomas. I may be pronouncing it wrong. Please don't quote me. You may have to like research it so you can actually get the correct pronunciation because I'm bad with grammar sometimes. So sorry. But it's again common in African American women. So I believe that my process of my fibroid growth was when I started developing and started having uh, cycles, periods, menstrual cycles, whatever you want to call them. I call them lady days personally. So um, I started my cycles when I was pretty young in age. I was 10 years old. Um, I was transitioning in the cusp of going into the sixth grade of starting middle school is when I started having cycles. My cycles would be really, really heavy bleeding. Um, I would have uh, heavy, heavy cramps, like really, really bad. Um, pelvic pain and pressure is common symptoms. Frequent urination, which I had really, really, really bad. Like I would drink a bottle of water and 30 minutes later, I had to go to the restroom. I would go to the restroom like two, maybe three times in an hour. I wouldn't have time for him. Like I would go a lot. Um, lower back pain. And then you have pain during sex um, and as well as difficulties getting pregnant. Obviously because the tumors are in the area where your baby would technically grow. So anyways, my experience with it is that I had really heavy bleeding, um, really bad days where in, in seconds, within minutes, I would go from burning hot, like sweating profusely to just being freezing cold, like shaking cold. It was really, really bad within minutes of one another. I could never keep anything down. I was always like vomiting uh, on the first day. It was really, really bad. And so this went on from the time frame of between uh, when I started when I was 10 years old up until about 2006 or 2007. So that means I started my cycle around the year 2000, 2001. And I went through those like really, really bad days up until about junior year in high school. So yeah, it was a long process. But I believe after that journey of those bad days that the fibroids kind of had hit their peak and they stopped growing. So that's probably why the bad days were like over and it was just like normal cycles but they were still really heavy um so um i started going to the obgyn and i believe i went my freshman year in college so about 2009 is probably when i first went when i was about 17 you don't have to be sexually active in order to go to the obgyn they're not just baby doctors they are there to just check your lady parts to make sure that everything is you know up and normal um for you uh for things such as like cyst and fibroid because they're tumors that develop in the body just because the body says mm, let's develop tumors that's what I think of it so I went to the doctor and me being me I didn't know that I had fibroids because the doctor never mentioned it mind you I was a little bit heavier at the time I used to weigh around that time I was between the cusp of 160 to 170 so I was a lot heavier at that time so um, at one point I remember maybe about the third visit to the doctor you go once a year so about the third visit that I I had to her so that would have been about 2011 2012 is when um, when she was doing the pelvic exam and, you know she was saying that she couldn't really see my cervix or whatever and so she was you know trying to figure out what was going on and so there's this um, there's this 
clamp that they use not necessarily a clamp but there's like this device that they use it looks like this but it's kind of like it opens up so they use that and they lube it and put it in your lady bit so they can see inside to get a, a sample and they open it up so they can see better and at the end of that they'll take that out and they'll use their finger and they'll check to you know pressure to see you know make sure that everything's normal for you like your fallopian tubes and things like that so as she was pressing my stomach she noticed that there was a large mass but mind you I was a fitness junkie by then like I was working out from 2009 when I got to college until this day I still exercise so I was thinking oh that's nothing it's just you know uh, muscle from like doing like weighted ab exercises and stuff like that yeah no it, it defin definitely was not uh, muscle it was fibroids it was like growth that was there that shouldn't have been there and so there was a large mass um on the bottom portion of my stomach like basically from my abdomen like under my belly button up until it's a little bit longer you can see my surgical scar uh that they did so it was like kind of from here down it was like this entire area um was raised with the fibroids that were there and so she wanted to get a second opinion from another doctor well not necessarily a second opinion but she wanted to get a visual so by her wanting a visual they didn't do a general regular ultrasound they did a transvaginal ultrasound which is the same thing except for they take a camera on a scope and they stick it in your lady parts and it's just to get a visual of the inside to see you know what what potentially is there so mind you i was kind of mad because it took her like until the next doctor's visit about a year later the well not about but the next year when i went back um and she said that she didn't trust the results that they had received from the first transvaginal ultrasound that i did receive so um after that visit i had to go get another um ultrasound and that's when they found out like how big they were and my fibroids i will insert a picture so uh, it's kind of graphic if you're not if you're squeamish you may want to like kind of skip past it but I will insert a picture of what was taken out I wish I did have pictures from before so you can see where what I mean as far as where the mass was I will probably try to find some pictures to add but I'm going to add the pictures of what was taken out um, and they did take out 13 fibroids by the time that I did have surgery um, so she finally got that down and once we got an establishment of what, what it was and what was there the doctor decided that she wanted to um you know go ahead and do the surgery to remove them and what we decided on was that we needed to do a de lupron depot shot and the lupron depot shot was used for my fibroids to help kind of shrink them not necessarily because mine were too massive in order for them to be shrunk by any means so it was really to help with blood reduction and they do use it for i believe endometriosis but they use it for many other things men and women do use this shot the shot was good for three months it was um when I got this shot this shot made me feel not like myself so with this shot I was always nauseated I was always hot like sweating hot like I felt like I was pregnant and going through menopause all at one time and mind you I got the shot in February and I had surgery in May. So February 2016, I got my shot and you had to schedule the appointment three months, three months. Like you literally had to schedule it on the money of actually when you got the shot. And I had surgery um, at the time. Again, I was still in that cusp of between at that point, I dropped my weight from about 160, 170 to 150 and was maintaining it for a while. By the time I ended up having surgery and I got the Depron, the Lupron shot or however you pronounce it I'll insert the name as well but um by the time I got that shot I got to the doctor was getting ready to have surgery I was down to like 133 so maybe it did help kind of shrink the fibroids in a sense um the slightest bit but then again I was always my own personal sauna so I could have lost weight just from sweating as well as barely eating because I was always nauseated it was so bad to as nauseated as I was um 
when I got the surgery, they had to do a C-section cut. Again, as you saw, it's uh, from my belly button here and it goes all the way down. Disregard my other parts um but it's a really long scar they had to do like a c-section cut because my fibroids were so big they weren't able to do a bikini cut and a bikini cut is under so i had to get mines um this way vertical um i think that's right anyways disregard so yes so i got the, the them removed they took out 13 and you'll see how big they were the biggest one i cannot remember how big she said it was but it was pretty massive from what they took out and everybody's like oh my gosh they took that out of you where did it have room to grow i don't know i'm I'm just as clueless as everybody else. I was just, you know, going through the experience. So, mind you, it's a... Um it was a lot going on and after I had surgery, I felt so much better, but I had to stay out of work for six to eight weeks generally like a per like a lady who had a baby but i didn't have a baby i just had my fibroids removed so the process is like man when i'm telling y'all you don't know how much you cherish a hospital bed until you have to come back to your own bed and you don't have a tempur that moves up and down like the hospital bed. It was a struggle for the first couple of days, you know, trying to move around and get in and out of the bed. It's kind of like you got to scooch everywhere, move everywhere, like very, very, very subtle movements because you basically, I was like cut open. That was my very first ever first ever surgery i had never been through anything like that and i was scared but hey i'm still here so everything worked out for itself so i think that is something that we definitely need to start talking about and because a lot of ladies don't talk about it i can almost uh, guarantee you that if you have 25 30 women in your family i can assure you maybe half of them or a little bit less than half probably have fibroids and don't talk about it. But fibroids was something that's very invasive. And again, the OBGYN is very important because it helps detect things like that and other, you know, under common, uh, other common issues that ladies have vaginally. Um, you don't have to be sexually active to go to the OBGYN. I was not at the given time of when I actually did get my surgery and everything like that. So that's a different, you know, ball game. Things change a little bit, I guess, after you do become sexually active, but not very much. But it is just for your overall health and well-being. It's very much so important to go because sometimes even women who go through pregnancies sometimes have um, fibroids, but their fibroids are probably very small or minimal they may get them removed after the time of their birth uh, after they have their children maybe they may not have to get them removed at all because they're not causing any underlying issues but as massive as mine were which again i am going to insert a picture um you'll see what i mean as far as like what i went through and probably how i felt it was very very a tough experience to go through for me to be have been so young and having to experience that it was really really bad but now i've been three years post surgery it's 2019 this past may made three years and i haven't had any issues any complications or any kind of um any kind of regrowth as i know of right now which we're praying that with my upcoming doctor's visit that i don't have any regrowth because I don't want that. I don't want to have to go through that again. It is a scary experience because at the process and in the time, the doctor was like, there's potential of you probably having to get a full hysterectomy. I literally was in tears after I left the doctor's office because I was like, I do eventually want to have children. I don't have any now. I probably wouldn't have been able to have any before I had my surgery. But, you know, it's something that you really wouldn't want to hear, especially at the age of like 23, 24. You know, you know, some of my friends have children now and it's just like, you know, think about, you know, if I have kids in the future, I may not be able to. So it's a very, maybe that's some reason, parts of the reason why a lot of people probably do not talk about fibroids because maybe they didn't have the same experience as myself of being lucky to be able to still 
probably bear children versus some people who may not be able to and have to actually have a full hysterectomy and getting that process done because everybody's symptoms everybody's situations and growths are very much different so I'm just going off of my experience but if you know anybody or you went through that process yourself you know, drop a comment like we can we can just start a dialect on it and kind of try to open the topic up a lot more because there's a lot of people who go through it. Like I watched The Real Housewives of Atlanta and Portia Williams was going through that situation before she got pregnant with her baby that she has now. And she was kind of a high risk pregnancy due to her circumstance of uh, having fibroids and having kind of infertility issues. So it's something that a lot of people, you know, really are not openly discussing and it's something that should be talked about because I mean hey it's it's the human body it's like some the, the human body we can control it in so many aspects but there's a lot that we can't control so it's just something to think about you know what I mean like I don't know it was an experience I know that so I mean hey it's good to get your daily checkups and if it wasn't for my mother I mean, I probably would still be in this situation and probably would have never got to remove. My mother is the biggest person that makes me go to the doctor. Like, that's like the only doctor outside of the dentist that I go to. I don't even go get a regular checkup like I should every year. I mean, I should, but I feel like, hey, I'm young. I don't need to. But that's when you end up, you know, letting things progress for so long and you never will know or you let it get worse off and worse off and worse off. So, hey, man, I'm telling y'all, getting your yearly checkups is very, very, very important. Even if you don't want to go, it's best to go and know versus not know. So I hope that video helps. I hope I didn't ramble too much. But I mean, again, if you have questions, you want to talk about it, I'm here. I we can we can discuss it. It's something that I've went through. I've been through. I understand it. And it's just I know it's not the easiest thing to go through. But I hope y'all enjoyed it. Peace out.